That's it. I quit. Just kidding. It's okay, you guys. It's only drag. It's not even only drag. It's only drag race. It's okay. Let's move on. So, uh, hi everybody, my name is Marta Mama, I'm your basic queer bitch, and I'm here to explain you all the references about Drag Race España Season 3. First of all, uh, thank you to this lovely person that sent me a PayPal last week. If you are interested in supporting my channel, you have that information down below. Uh, this episode, okay, where do we start? Because, girl... So last week episode, Bisa went home. I was a little bit angry about that. I was a little bit angry about everything, to be honest. But it's okay now because when they enter the workroom, they're cleaning the mirror and they are talking about Bisa. And we get this exact copy from All Stars 2 where the eliminated queens appear in the mirror. And obviously, they're talking about the queen that just went home. They gave that opportunity to have this Alyssa Edwards Fifi thing in All Stars 2. Um, but Bitita didn't say anything about Visa, so they tried to set it up. It didn't happen. But you can see all the eliminated queens in the mirror looking like, hmm, hmm. And so we get to know this is the week where one of the queens, one of the eliminated queens, is going to have their second chance. So with the new day in the workroom, they start talking with the eliminated queens a little bit about the drama. And Visa has literally no problem talking, you know. She will say what she thinks. And she says that, you know, last Untucked, she had some opinions about Pitita. And, you know, we have this whole conversation. And Visa says that she has helped Pitita with a look. And Pitita says, girl, you've never helped me with any looks or whatever. And, you know, there's a whole conversation. And Pink Chadora jumps in and says, well, actually... Yeah, we did help you. I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. It, you know, it was all this little drama. I think that sometimes Pitita has this, like, French vanilla fantasy, which I usually love. Uh, delusional people I usually love and adore. But, yeah, I think the edit they want to give Pitita is either the villain of the season or a delusional queen. I would rather have her as a delusional queen than, you know, the villain because it's not even like there's no clear villain because it, Visa is talking she should be the one considered to be the villain of the season maybe because of her opinions and what she's saying what she's doing but she's not getting really that feeling from everyone I believe so Supreme comes in and explains that this is the week they're going to get a second chance. This week's maxi challenge is a roast and they will be performing that roast in pairs. And she tells us that since one of the queens is going to come back to the competition, this week there are going to be two queens that are eliminated. I understand where they were coming from. Um, I think that they wanted to have like more twists and turns and make it more dynamic and have new things and second opportunities and you root for the girls for longer because they're coming back and you have two eliminated queens because that way maybe you can get rid of one front runner and one regular person that would be eliminated maybe. I don't know, but I think they didn't get what they were expecting with all these rules. But at least we have a set of rules. We have a setup and everything is understandable this episode. So since Visa was the last queen eliminated, she is the first one to choose which girl she wants to work with. And she chose Pitita. So there's a couple of things here about the edit. Because the reasoning behind this, it's either because she wants Pitita out of the competition, which I personally don't think would benefit Visa whatsoever. I really think her intentions were like, okay, since I think that you're being favored, 
and that the judges are giving you easier tasks and they are valuing your effort more than other queens, I want to work with you because I want, you know, if you're going to be favored, I'm going to be favored. Also to create good TV, you know, Visa is from Mexico. She is all about like this telenovela fantasy and it is good TV. But, you know, from the show's perspective, from the edit, it looked like uh, since she has been eliminated, she wants Pitita to be eliminated too. So she's going to fuck up on purpose, all that. Macarena chooses Pinchadora and Pinchadora doesn't look too thrilled about that. But, well, they are two queens from Andalusia and they have sometimes similar drag styles with a couple of things. But I do think that Macarena wasn't having the best, like, mental health state around this time. And Pinchadora wasn't specifically happy with many of the things that Macarena was saying or doing. Like, Pinchadora doesn't seem very thrilled. Kelly Roller chooses Vania Vainilla since they're both, like, old school drag queens. Chuchi chooses Bestia. And it does make sense in my fantasy because they're both like quite intellectual people and artistically inspired people. So I think that if I were Chuchi, I would have chosen Bestia too. That's what I mean. And Bestia is like, what are we to, going to do together? None of us are comedy queens. You don't have to be a comedy queen to win these challenges. And sometimes the comedy queens are the ones that do the worst either in snatch game in the roast you know chanel anorex chooses ornella and yeah i i understand why she did that and um i would have done the same thing ornella has a lot of experience on stage and she knows how to develop a character maria edilia has to choose between the two people left that are either paquita and clover i really thought that she was going to pick clover for, for some reason because they're very very close friends but she chose paquita paquita's naturally a very funny person so i like i understand her decision too and i love the pairing i love the couple but clover is the one that's left out so supreme explains to her that she is going to be the MC, she's going to be hosting the whole thing, and that if she wins, she's not only going to win the $2,500, not dollars, euros, she is also going to get the power to decide which queen comes back. Which honestly is not that huge of an advantage, I mean, mm, so that's the setup and we do get some footage about the preparation for them. So instead of having a walkthrough in the workroom like they would usually have, or instead of having like troubleshooting with a comedian, uh, what they did is since Clover is the MC, she's going to go uh, one by one, like asking what they're going to do so she can take some notes. So this is not based on like advice. Uh, this is more like we as the viewer are like Clover Bish in that moment. And she has opinions, which can be our opinions. And she gives the perspective of the viewer because she is being explained everybody's setup. And of course we have this interesting conversation with Visa and Pitita where there is a lot of tension, but you know, I can see that Visa was genuinely having a good time. Like, remember you guys, this is just drag. It's not that serious. They will feel some type of way, but this is not like super important for them. So it shouldn't be super important for us. Visa I think has a very mature, honest and direct way of explaining how she feels about things. I think that she can be petty but on purpose, that the petty people that don't do it on purpose and that just like it slides, it's when it's, you know, sometimes it's a little bit uncomfortable. But when you're an honest person and you explain anything and you want to like give it a little bit of drama and you get into this telenovela mood, I thought it was like a good way of approaching it. Pitita says like, oh yeah, Visay, now I remember that you did help me with that one look, yes. 
and they decide they're going to use all this tension to create their script. Maca and Pinchadora, when they show them getting ready, they just show them reading each other to filth. It was funny, but it was just reads, okay? That conversation should have been like for the reading challenge, not for this challenge, but it was being very funny, but they were just like reading each other to filth. Kelia and Vania Vainilla um, are talking about like the place they come from in their drag. They are both like very like old school drag queens. They have a very old school, dirty kind of humor and they do have great chemistry together, you know, because they're both like filthy sluts and I love I don't know if you guys saw this but when they're like writing their script there is one take where you can see what is in Kelly Roller's notes and what she has in her notes is literally this I, I kind of live Chuchi and Bestia seem like they are not very confident, but they're working really well together Maria Edili and Paquita are also like working well together. I love this pairing. I love them both so much. And they're just trying to make something with the natural humor they both have. And Clover doesn't seem very confident either, but you know, Clover is, is a funny bitch. She has a lot of references about Drag Race and she has learned a lot about Drag Race. And one thing about uh, Rose is that this is not a concept that it exists traditionally in Spain. The concept of a roast we know probably because of Drag Race and TV from the US, but this is not a concept that really exists in Spain. So I think that since Clover is and has been a reviewer and she's this huge Drag Race fan, she does understand what needs to be done in a roast and how to build a joke correctly. So she should give herself a little more credit, I think. Then they show them all getting ready, doing their makeup before the roast. And there is this huge conversation in the workroom with Pitita. Um, and, you know, I understand that Pitita is feeling attacked because sometimes all these things are a little bit difficult to get. But the girls were telling her like over and over, Pitita, you do this thing right before the runway or right before a maxi challenge, you go to a queen and you say something like, oh, so you're going to wear that? Oh, good luck. Right before they go on stage. And that is mining a lot of people confidence. But Pitita's excuse, she says that, well, that's like my job. I work with fashion and I have to give an opinion about fashion. There is nothing I can do about it. And people are just a little bit insecure, maybe, with their things. And it's not my fault that they feel insecure. So, you know, it's this conversation. And she kept saying over and over again, well, I didn't know that that was bothering anyone because no one was saying anything. And they're all looking at her like, girl, we're saying it to you right now. And we've been saying it from the very, very, very beginning. What are you talking about? So Pink Tadarek is a little bit like her tone seemed very pointed and Macarena explains it like girl if you know because Pitita was saying that this has happened to her outside of Drag Race like in her real life many times and Macarena like in a very like mature way says girl if we're saying this and you've heard this before maybe it's time to reflect a little bit. But well, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Pitita Gate situation uh, later in the video, okay? So the roast starts and Clover is the MC and she did an amazing job. She started saying like, oh, so since all of the queens have discovered that I'm actually a woman, they've decided to exclude me. And so I was going to make a lot of like lesbian funny jokes, but now all the jokes you're going to get are like dick jokes and popper and like sauna and cruising. And so that's what you get. And she was absolutely on point. It was like, give this woman a round of applause because she was, she got the rhythm. Sometimes she has problems with the rhythm, but she did it this time. She did a very 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 good job she was funny she knew how to build a joke you need the setup and you need the punchline and she did that every single time 
My favorite part from the Clover Bitch performance was the look on her face when Lisa and Pitita finished and she had to go upstage and she was like, well, <laughs> she was so natural and so funny. I really like that. So first up is Maria Edilia and Paquita. This position is a little bit harsh. You know, usually people don't want to be the first ones out in the roast. And they decided to do something like a little bit theatrical. They start with Maria Edilia singing a song which you guys may not have understood one single thing. It was like the Dune Girl. And it was, a, it was a parody version of a very well-known song in Spain, Hijo de la Luna by Mecano. And she made a version about the dunes, like the sand dunes, because when we think of like sand dunes in the gay world, we would usually think of Mas Palomas and the Canary Islands, because that's an island with like a lot of dunes and there's like a lot of like draggy gay stuff there. And we do have, in general, a lot of like sandy dunes in many of our amazing, amazing beaches in Spain. And those dunes are usually used, you know, to meet up with strangers and uh, make deep connections with them. She sang this parody where it's not like the girl from the moon, it's the girl from the dunes. And she gives birth, basically, to Paquita was dressed up as a baby and they talk about like milk and breast milk and your mama's milk and um then it suddenly stopped and it they say like cut and it's like they were filming the song in a set and then they stop and they start roasting everyone it was supposed to be like a type of introduction but it wasn't like well explained. I think they could have developed this a lot better. I would have dropped the whole song thing. I'm sure maybe that's that's a bit that Maria Dilia does and it's usually very funny, but not everything that is funny in a bar is funny in Drag Race. And they had a couple of like reads for people and a couple of jokes and some of them were well constructed. Maria Dilia I think did a pretty good job, but Paquita was like, she wasn't doing anything specifically terrible, but it just didn't work. Then Bestia and Chuchi come out and these two really did understand how to build a joke. That's what I always say. And that's the whole critique after every single roast that I've ever seen in Drag Race. It's always if the people understand the rhythm and the pace of a roast and if they understand how to build a joke and that you need the setup and you need the punchline. And they use that amazingly. They used a very good rhythm. They used amazing, very harsh reads, but with a very, very good setup. All of these reads are very easily understandable and that you guys can understand that they did an amazing job. But since my job is explaining the references, I think I have to explain a lot about Ornella and Chanel Anorek's roast because the subtitles were terrible. If you don't speak Spanish, you won't understand anything. So they started as two little girls and they say that they're writing their letter to the three wise men. You guys uh, write letters to Santa in Christmas. Well, we do have Santa here. Not in every house they celebrate Santa, but the day that the children get presents is in January 6th. It's the day of the three wise men, the three kings that brought presents to Jesus. That's the day we celebrate. It's in January, but the kids are still off from school from their Christmas break. So many kids have both. Many kids only have the three wise men. So they're writing basically their letter to Santa and they're asking things for each one of like, they're all members of their family and they're asking for things. So that's, this gives a very easy setup for the whole roast. And it makes it easy because it is true that if you're like being a small child and they're supposed to be like clown, but they're children, uh, it does make it easy because you have a, a certain innocence about yourself which makes everything a lot more like sweet and you can go harsher on the reads. 
but this whole set was very difficult to translate and whoever is doing the subtitles for the season girl call me i'll help you out they were talking a lot about like drag personalities in spain without it having a lot to do with drag race they talk about the, the farala sisters because carmen farala was part of like a trio and you know since drag race well they're not working together anymore they're still sisters but they talk about them they talk about chumina power who is another drag queen in spain who has worked many times with vanilla vainilla and she says that like she's going to have a protection order against vanilla vainilla and, you know they use all these like drag queen references it's like i don't know imagine that in drag race in a rose they start talking about Peaches Christ, Lady Bunny, and people that doesn't have a lot to do with Drag Race, but they have a lot to do with some of the contestants. They say something about Los Cabios, they call them like they're lesbian ants, and they say they're going to back, go back to their origins. Uh, one of them is going to go back to Física y Química, since Javi was one of the actors in that TV show. Física y Química was the TV show that they made a parody in season one and they say that the other Javi is going to go straight to the black and white which is a gay bar in Madrid these type of like dark old school gay bars in like the gay quarter in Madrid where like I don't know like Maria Edilia works there all the time for example maybe you guys didn't understand because they didn't translate it well like they say I want someone to bring Anna Locking the bill. That's because, um, okay, how we talk here in Spain, this would be considered very, very rude in the United States, but it's not whatsoever in Spain. Sometimes to ask for the bill in a bar, you would just like call the waiter like this, like, hey, like, eh. and if you do like this, if you do this, like writing something in the air, they understand that you're asking for the bill and then the bring you your, your bill um here they do not bring you your bill when you finish your meal because it's very normal for us to finish a meal and then we will say maybe two hours just sitting in the table in the bar or the restaurant after eating your lunch or your dinner and we will just stay kikiing after that that's a very important concept in spain it's called sobremesa after what what happens socially once you finish eating but you're still around the table Maybe you have a coffee, maybe you have a cocktail, but that's like important part of socializing. So when they say someone bring this lady the bill because she's been asking for it all this time, they mean that Anna Loki has been doing, you know, the, the little fingery thing. Like Maddie Rand says, like doing the ova things and snapping her fingers, but she's never been to a ball in her life. Exactly. They're talking about that. They say that they were confusing Eva Soriano, the guest judge, with Irma Soriano, which is a TV host. And they say something about Cloverfish and suction cups. That's because when she does the splits on stage, she's supposed to make like a suction cup with her lady parts on stage. Like that's the whole thing. So it was very funny, but I understand that if you guys saw it, you wouldn't understand it. But you did see that everyone was laughing very hard. You didn't understand why. Bania and Kelly. Okay, so... I am not the biggest fan of this type of humor. I understand where they were coming from and they were able to do this comedy without being like bottom shaming or talking too much mean things about maybe like feminine guys. And there are a couple of things that I did like and you have to understand that these two queens are amazing at what they do. I do think that they are the ones that did this challenge that we're able to build the set and build each one of the jokes in the more professional way i just think like the whole thing was disgusting <laughs> but you know that is a type of humor it's not my type of humor but it is a type of humor and they wanted to like you know pay homage to that type of humor and this old school drag nasty slutty dirty type of jokes and this worked for them um the rhythm was amazing it was very dynamic it felt like with a lot of jokes but it didn't feel long whatsoever they have a couple of references that maybe you didn't understand they talk about sandoval that's like a clinic where you go to go tested for stis they kept saying stds 
It's supposed to be STIs, right? They sing a song about farting and milk coming out. It was like, girl, and like if you're, they make so nasty, nasty, dirty jokes that I was like feeling really uncomfortable. But I do understand that the way they constructed it, the way they built the whole set and the way they built every single joke was amazing. And they didn't translate this, but at the end of the set, they say something like, let's go, let's get out of here quickly. But what they said in Spain uh, was, vámonos de aquí cagando leches, let's get out of here shitting milk because shitting milk in colloquial Spanish means quickly, you know, but they were making reference to that joke. That's why everyone was laughing so hard when they finished because they made reference to that little song. In general, this was all wrong, nasty, and honestly, I loved it. Pinchadora and Macarena was very difficult to watch. I hate watching things and feeling uncomfortable for them. And I love and I love both of these queens too much. I do know that Macarena was having a very hard time with her mental health that day and the previous day. And she was feeling terrible for Pinchadora because at the end, what they what happened to them is that they did have all the punchlines, but they didn't have one single setup. So they did have very funny, funny, funny reads and very funny jokes. But if when if they're said with no setup, they are only like mean reads. But this has happened in every single roast in the history of Drag Race. It has happened to some of our favorite drag queens. I don't know. It's happened to Trinity the Tug. It's happened to, I don't know. Like a lot of people has had this experience of just being mean because they don't know how to build a joke and build a set. So the end up product felt tense, it felt mean, and it didn't feel like they were enjoying themselves. And then Bisa and Pitita, the energy was off too. They decided to play this off and have like, Bisa was trying to like set Pitita up and just leave and make her be in the bottom. But their energies were way off because Bisa was being like a very realistic actress and Pitita, you could really tell that it was a parody because in some point when Bisa spoke, you were like, oh, is this bitch for real? And then Pitita spoke and, oh, oh no, this is part of the thing. But again, they didn't know how to build the jokes. They didn't know how to build setup and punchlines. They did have funny jokes. It was a concept that could have worked but they didn't know how to build over this. I don't think that Bisa was trying to do anything bad to be did that, me personally, maybe you think different. So since we know that three queens are gonna be in the bottom and we're going to have one winner, I really thought that probably Clover was the one that did the best because even though Ornella and Chanel did a good job and Vesti and Chuchi did a good job, uh, Vanya and Kelly did a good job too. I really thought that Clover was the one that had the most like well-constructed rhythm, pace, jokes, and taste level because in general like Kelly and Vanya was a little bit like the taste level was a bit off but um, okay let's go with the runway. This runway theme is wig palooza, where they have to use hair, wigs, to construct a look. The first one out is Pinchadora. She is wearing this like devil look, like the devil of love. And she has this beautiful hair with smoke coming out of it. And it has like a little heart. She looked amazing in this red velvet. It was all like pretty well constructed. This look was Okay, was a safe look. I I liked it for her. Pitita comes out with an amazing gown with like a lot of hair and a lot of a dress with like a lot of material and she's feeling her like red, like orange and pink fantasy and it was like nothing special but it was like a very cool gown with a lot of movement with a lot of fabric. This look from Bestia, she's giving all the club kids scene, like Harry, and she has a baseball bat, but it's all covered in hair. And she's like this creature, but she's from the streets and she's dangerous. And she does this thing where she falls. And I didn't understand at first that that was on purpose or not, but yes, it was on purpose. She painted blood on her knees 
to make it more, you know, dynamic. And I, I really loved this look for Bestia. Vania Vanilla looked very good, like Vania Vanilla keep, keeps missing in the looks, but this look had something like, we've seen this thing where they weave hair and they make looks, we've seen it in every single hair ball, but I think we've never seen such good work at actually weaving it, like a real material you weave. Uh, this has, as Anna Looking said, a lot of hours of working with hair to make this look. I think she was inspired by Shena, the warrior princess. We always love Shena, please. Do you guys call it Shena or Sheena? Ornella with this new inspired hair piece. I was living, I loved it. And then she shows that she has like a little um, pussy wig. And she makes reference to Cantudo. Uh, in Spain, we had like a very, very harsh censorship on TV. And as you know, nowadays, we don't have a lot of censorship on TV. Uh, every time I watch the episode with the subtitles, I have to go to WOW in a VPN. And I see everything that they blur out. Like they blur out Paquita's nipples all the time. I don't understand the censorship on the United States. But here we had a huge censorship during the dictatorship. But after then, like when the censorship ended, we started like going the complete opposite way. So we started showing a lot of skins on films on TV. And it was very famous that the girls had like a lot of hair down there. They had so many, so much hair that you couldn't really see what was behind. So the way that they were like, covering their own bits would either be with like either their real hair or with like merkins. And this new Foranela is also like the symbol to some of her origins with like electronic music and the electro cabaret that she does. So it was also like significant for her. Clover looked super cool with this look. This was not the original hair look that she was going to wear. Her original hair was going to look something like this, but it did a uh, break like a couple days before before filming and she had to make this wig like from scratch and just like very little time she decided to go with like a purple goatee um and i don't know what why they said that the subtitles said that yeah i'm playing with the genre no in spain she's in spanish she said i'm playing with gender that's obvious like there's a lot of little things like that about the translation that are a bit weird but well and I love this look for her. If you didn't know that this wasn't her original look, you wouldn't have known because she looked amazing, honestly. Hi, it is Marta here. So I forgot to talk about this look of Paquita from all of them. I forgot Paquita, can you believe it? So this look was super cool. It was very simple, but Paquita's looks are often quite simple, but tasteful. And she knows who she is and where she's going. Uh, Paquita is all about long hair, like having very long natural hair and this look is all about that, like the whole fabric gets constructed above, the nails and the shoes are all completely clear and see-through and she just constructed this like dynamic silhouette, it, she said that it looked like she was coming out of the swamp uh, she did this herself with the help of her very dear friend La Caudilla, like most of her looks. And I don't know, I think it's, she looked gorgeous. You could see the whole point and it is simple. Maybe it wasn't like the most amazing constructed look, but I think it doesn't have to be. This is one of my favorite looks from this runway. Of course, you know, I'm biased, it's just my drag aunt and I love her so much, but I think she looked gorgeous and she has like such amazing taste and vision for fashion and for drag fashion, which is a different thing. Um, I really, really, really love this look. So with the judges' decisions, we get to know that basically like the top two are going to be Clover and Vania. Safe, we have Ornella and Bestia. And in the bottom three, we have Pinchadora, Fitita, and Paquita. Girl.
In the end, talk, they're talking, and each one, like, the three queens that are in the bottom, the bottom is very obvious, and you, we already know how the episode is going to end, right? Uh, but they're talking about how they feel in the Untucked, right? Pitita's like, well, I did my best, I worked very hard, and this is what you get, and... Uh, Macarena was be feeling terrible for Pinchadora, but I really love, uh, you know, I'm biased, but I really loved how the Paquita's energy, like, girls, like, don't be, this is not that important, this is just drag race, like, calm down, I don't want this experience, or being on top, being in the bottom, to make this experience not good for me, I want to have fun, I want this to be a nice experience for all of us, I loved her energy. This is not this serious, you guys. This is just drag. So we get to know that the winner is Vanya Lainilla. So the queen that will have a second chance is Kelly Roller. Do I agree with this? No. I think that Clover Bish was robbed once again. I don't know what she needs to do to win a challenge, but Vanya has been doing a very good job and that here she was doing her best and she was doing what she's a specialist in and I'm very happy that she won I'm happy for Kelly Roller to come back to the competition I really love that she took the time to talk about STI prevention she talked about having problems having STIs and going to the hospital and not being treated by the staff appropriately I love that they talk about like the very old school drag queens that they grew up watching and in fact the same day that this aired uh, Sandra Montiel who was the queen that Kelly Roller pay homage in her first episode uh, just passed away so it was like perfect timing of course she didn't know when she filmed but you know it like felt close to our hearts when we heard that so I think Vanya is one of the most likable queens that we have in the season. I think that she's been doing a very good job and that she hasn't won anything yet. So I'm very happy for Vanya. Vanya is one of like my favorite people in that cast. But I do know that their drag is not the drag that I'm most interested in. But I understand that it's not for me, but they did a good job. So they tell Clover Bish, Clover Bish, you are rough. I mean... Say, you can go backstage with the rest of the girls. So we have a three-way lip sync with Paquita, Pitita, and Pinchadora. And I have a couple of things to say. First of all, lip syncs, like when it's three ways, it's always very messy. It's difficult to see how each of the queens are doing. It's very difficult to edit in a fair way. I think we saw a lot of the faces of Los Javis and the judges. And, you know, it was... You know, it's messy. But well, the song was No Controles by Ole Ole. I'll put a link down below. Very cool song. Like, you can't control how I dress. Like, it's an 80s anthem. They're coming for Los Javis. So, obviously, Pitita gets saved and Paquita and Pinchadora have to go home. And I think that when the production thought about this, they didn't think in this possibility. They didn't think that three of the front runners were going to be in the bottom and they will have to eliminate two of them. So, I'm obviously devastated about Paquita going home. I'm obviously devastated about Pinchadora. I think they were two of the most generous and cool, honest, interesting queens that we have in the competition. I think they are two of the queens that were doing amazing and that had a lot of fans. I know everyone is a little bit angry about this, but and tying it up a little bit with my rant last week, um, I think in this episode at least you understood clearly who were in the bottom and you understood that with the rules that they have set up, they have to eliminate two queens. Um, was Pitita the best one in the lip sync? Well, with how they edited it, at least, probably yes. So I think it was all justified from an editing standpoint. My point with Pitita is not that I don't like Pitita. I think that the production and the direction of the show are putting her in a very tough spot to win. Because now she has like a lot of things open in front of her to make people not like her.
I think that she is an amazing queen that has a lot of things to show, but I think that all of these things that I'm going to explain, none of them are have anything to do neither with Pitita nor with how she has performed. These are things that just the production had, okay? First of all, having the, J the judges uh, favor her, I want you guys to remind that she was safe in the talent show with the mime talent thing that was clearly in the bottom. She was safe also in Snatch Game, which was also for me clearly in the bottom. And she has won in weeks where it wasn't that clear that she should have won. Um, I do agree that she is one of the front runners and was one of the queens that is doing the best. But it made you like think a lot because people have been in the bottom for a lot, a lot, a lot less this season. So it makes people feel like not trusting of the judges. Then you have the fact that she has been assigned easier roles, like cherry picked roles that are basically the same, like dumb girl all the time over and over again. So that is like the production favoring Pitita. This doesn't help Pitita whatsoever because now she has less people rooting for her than she deserves. Then you have the issues that she can have with the other queens, like talking behind their back while she is in Untucked or like going to them right after the right before the runway or right before the challenge and saying like, oh, so you're going to wear that. Well, that is shit. Good luck. You know, all that conflict that doesn't make us love Pitita. But I think that this is not her fault. I think that she's not aware of this, that she lacks awareness. And the fact that now she has won in the lip sync fairly and two of the front runners of the show have been eliminated. This obviously is not her fault whatsoever. She did what needed to be done. She did her job. She did a lip sync. She won and she stayed. But I want Pitita to do very good in the competition. And I think with what they are doing, unless they are able to bring up this redemption story, I don't know how the producers and directors of the show are going to be able to crown Pitita. I think that right now with the edit she is getting, she is not crownable. She cannot win the thing. They cannot, with this edit, have Pitita win. And I think this is not her fault. And I think she is a victim of almost all of this. Of course, she's not a victim of like being two faced and not being aware of the things. But I think that production is playing with both things. Like, let's benefit the queen that they're all having problems with, like, socially. So let's have drama happen. And then let's have a redemption storyline. Maybe that's their motivation behind it. Or maybe they just were not not aware. Either or, it doesn't speak very loudly about production and direction. I love you guys. I think that sometimes you want to do something and it doesn't end up happening. And I love Paquita and she fucked up in this challenge and I still love her. So Paquita and Pinchadora go home. They are eliminated officially and that's what we get. At least it was justified by the edit, I mean, okay? And I want you guys to remember that Drag Race is not their career. Drag Race doesn't tell us who is the best or the worst drag queen. Many of my favorite drag queens would do terribly in Drag Race. And some of the queens that win Drag Race are not my cup of tea. So it, it, this is just a gig they get. So drag race is not their careers, drag race is not drag. And I remind you guys, it's very easy to support a queen while this season is happening, but the real race starts now and that you guys really have the power to support the queens that you want to support. It's not only about getting angry with the show. We do know that not always the best drag queen wins. And in fact, the queens that have been more successful in the drag race history, maybe are not the winners or maybe they've won an All-Stars afterwards, but it's not about winning drag race. It's about, like Paquita says when she leaves, I want people to think of me of like a care free cool bitch and I want them to get me I want them to understand what's my style and who I am that way you can get closer to your audience and you can get them to know you 
So don't freak out, it's okay. I think that Paquita did an amazing show and I do think that if they have a tour, she's going to be one of the most loved queens in the tour. I know that she's going to be one of the queens that everyone wants to go to her gigs. So I am absolutely very, very, very proud of Paquita for not letting this play too much with her head. I'm very proud of her being herself and being able to show off. And it has nothing to do with the position that she ends up in. And I can say the same sad thing about Pinchador. I think that she has done an amazing race and that she has won probably more than what she expected. She's taking home like the love of a lot of people. And that's what really is going to change your career. It's not the money of the prize. Pinchadora has a beautiful phrase in Spanish uh, that can be translated as don't feel defeated, feel blessed. And I think both of them are like very generous and I don't know, I really like their energy. So remember, support the queens that you love. Remember that their career starts now. Remember that this is just a gig that they get. I honestly am only worried about their careers afterwards. That's why, that's why I was so angry last week in the ramp because I think that they are not benefiting any of the queens doing this. I think they were trying to, but they weren't getting where they wanted to go. If you didn't know, we have a version of Watch It Packing where Anna Locking interviews the queens. And if you've never watched one of them, you should watch this one. You have it on Whoppersons Plus. And this Watch It Packing, they call it Tras La Carrera, after the race. Um, this interview with both of them at the same time was so beautiful, so generous. They explained so much. And uh, if you haven't watched it, you have to. Honestly, right now I'm rooting for Clover and I'm rooting for Ornella and I think that my heart is going to be broken in a thousand million pieces because I don't like that they haven't gotten a win yet with all the good work that they're both doing, but well... So that's all for today. Remember that if you want to support my channel, you have my PayPal account down below. Remember to listen to me with Joseph Shepard in the podcast Exposed Spain. I'm sorry we didn't have an episode last week. Uh, we had a couple of problems, but we'll do a recap this week. Follow me on Twitter. You have, all, you have a lot of links and information down below. Shout out to my other reviewer friends. Shout out to Parody Paradise that talks about fashion. Uh, Emily Goes that talks about makeup. And shout out to Mat Maddie Rant who also covers the season in English. So that's it for today. I love you guys. Stay queer. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.